All right, now look, today I'm gonna show you guys how I whipped up one of the best sandwiches I have ever made in my life, and that is a beef French dip sandwich because my God on today. So let's just go on ahead and get into it. You are going to need three large sweet onions. You're also going to need chives, that's for garnish. You're going to need fresh garlic, thyme. You're also going to need balsamic vinegar. You're also going to need Worcestershire sauce, QP mayonnaise, this cream style horseradish, and then Grey Poupon Dijon mustard. You're going to need two packets of the Lipton onion mushroom soup mix, three cups of beef stock. Now, of course, this is that fresh beef stock that you guys just saw me make last week. But if you don't have it from scratch, I would just advise you to get the highest quality beef stock that you can possibly get because that is going to be a key component in making a fantastic au jus sauce towards the end. In our seasoning drawer, we only need onion powder and garlic powder, and then I'm going to be working with a chuck roast today. So those are all of the ingredients. You see that? You see that? You see that? Don't ask me for the damn ingredient list. Now, come on, child, let's make it. Now, for the chuck roast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a tablespoon of onion powder and a tablespoon of garlic powder to both sides. Then I'm going to be going in with some coarse kosher salt and black pepper. Now, depending on the cut of meat you use and how big it is, you could be a little bit more heavier handed or light handed with the seasonings. You can gauge that upon whatever type of meat you use. Just know... That if you do get yourself a cut of meat that has a little bit more fat in it, it's going to be nice and tender. And that's really what you want. To my Dutch oven, I've added in about three tablespoons or so of some olive oil. And now I'm going to start to uh, sear off each side of that chuck roast. While that is doing that, I'm going to start to prepare my onions because not only am I going to be adding onions to the pot to cook, but I'm also going to be making some caramelized onions to put on the sandwich. So I'm just going to go on ahead and get all of those prepped now so that I can get that out of the way. Like I said, I used three large altogether. One of them is going to go in the pot. The searing process, I would say, takes roughly about three to four minutes. Again, that's going to depend on the cut of meat that you use. But once it's been seared off on both sides, you can go on ahead and add in some of your onions to your pot. Then I'm going to start to add in all of the rest of the ingredients, which is four cloves of garlic. We're also going to be adding in a few dashes of Worcestershire. I would say that's probably about a tablespoon or so. Uh, don't go too crazy with it. Um, and then I'm going to be adding in the three cups of the beef broth. I have my oven preheated to 325 degrees. You're also going to add in both packs of the Lipton um, uh, soup. You're also going to be adding in some thyme and then going ahead and give all of that a mix just so that you can make sure that everything is fully incorporated. And then I place the lid on this and then I put this in the oven at 325 degrees for four hours. Now, if you want, of course, you can make this in a crock pot. I've, you know, done that many times, but today I just decided to do it in my Dutch oven because, you know, why not? Um, so yeah, put the top on it, put it in the oven, 325 degrees, four hours. The mayonnaise spread is a half a cup of the QP mayonnaise. I use about a half a tablespoon of Grey Poupon and then about a half a tablespoon of the horseradish. You can adjust that to your liking. Now to make the caramelized onion, I'm going to be using some tallow, aka beef fat. Remember I told you guys to save the beef fat because we were going to use that. I'm using about two tablespoons worth and then I'm also adding in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now to that, I'm going to go on ahead and add in the remaining onions that I had already chopped up and we're going to begin the process of caramelizing our onions. Now, if you've never caramelized onions, you should know that this should be low and slow. You don't want it to go too fast or you're going to end up burning them and they're not going to be that golden, pretty brown color like you want. As you can see, I've just added in a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, balsamic vinegar, a pinch of black pepper and a pinch of kosher salt. Give all of that a good mix. And like I said, Allow that to cook nice and slow. All of that sugar and stuff is going to caramelize, and that's how you get some really nice caramelized onions. Like right now, that's still not done. And I would say this was probably at about eight minutes. I would say in total, it took about 12 to 13 minutes. As long as the temperature's on low and you are mixing it around, you don't have to worry about them burning, you'll be just fine. This is what you want. This is the color that you're looking for. That, my friends... That, my friends, is what caramelized onions are supposed to look like. Of course, I'm going to be putting this on a French baguette. I've put some butter on 
you know, on both sides. Went on ahead, popped that in the oven, toasted that for a couple minutes until it was nice and browned. Uh, like I said, this cooked for four hours in the oven. You can tell when it's done, when it is extremely, extremely tender. Okay. I don't like no French um, beef dip sandwiches where you're having to slice it. It should be like the texture of like a pulled pork. You want it to be nice and soft and succulent and just melt in your mouth. So if you need to cook it longer, cook it longer. But don't don't overcook it though. Okay, so that was probably no more than about three, four pound chuck roast, if that, and it only took four hours. And as you can see, mine is nice and tender. It's still nice and juicy. It's retaining a lot of moisture. That's what you want. I'm now going to run this liquid through a strainer so that I can leave all the onions and everything behind. And that, my friends, is where the au jus comes into place. This is what you're going to be dipping your sandwich into. Now, if you want, of course, you can leave the onions in there. That's completely up to you. But, you know, that's that's just a matter of preference. Um, but now that I've gotten that nice and strained, I can go on ahead and set that to the side. Now that my bread has been slightly toasted, I'm going to add in my cheese. On one half of the bread, I used a high quality Havarti cheese. And on the other half, I used a sharp white cheddar. I'm going to place that back in the oven until that cheese starts to melt. Once it's nice and melted, then we can go on ahead and start to begin building the sandwich. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add in as much meat as I want because it's my sandwich, not yours, okay? Then on the other side, I'm gonna start to load in all of those delicious caramelized onions. I'm trying to tell you, watching this back is having me salivating all over again. Now that I have my caramelized onions laid out on my sandwich, I'm now gonna go in and top it off with some of those chives. Again, that's really just for garnish, but I do think it adds a little something, something to it. And then after that, you um, add in a drizzle of that mayo dressing, you know, the mayo spread. Um, you can put on as much or as little as you would like. I think a little bit goes a long way, but you know, customize it to your your liking once you get that on there your sandwich is all done close that bastard up and my god on today i know y'all see what i see and i know that y'all want this damn sandwich and if you don't well then i don't know what you're doing i don't know why you sat here for seven minutes and 24 seconds watching me if you don't want this okay but i need y'all to do me a favor Click that link in my bio and get a copy of my cookbook, Cultural Mosaic, a food tour around the globe, okay? Get yourself a copy. Get your cousin a copy. Get your grandmother a copy. It makes the perfect Christmas gift, okay? Listen to me. Your boy knows what he's doing. Do you see the sandwich I just made for y'all? Baby, I dipped it in that damn au jus and took a bite out of that bastard and almost cried. And I'm not a person that likes au jus. I'm not like a French dip sandwich type of person because I don't like bread soggy. But because that bread was nice and crunchy and toasted, the meat was melted in my mouth. The, the, the flavor coming from that homemade beef stock made the au jus just top notch. All around, this was a 10 out of 10. Follow my instructions. Make this sandwich for yourself, for your partner in crime. And you'll thank me later. Bye.